everyone. Thank you so much, Kevin. Welcome. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming this evening. Gorgeous day here in New York City. And I'm here tonight to talk to you about trading. So thanks for coming. I day trade. I'm a day trader. My name is Melissa Arma. I think some of you know me. And I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. I've had for about four years now, and I've been trading for eight years. And so there is only one strategy that I trade, and it's gap. And I recently started doing in the last, well, I guess almost not quite a year, started doing options with my strategy as well. So you really can do anything uh, with a gap, whether it's an overnight trade, a swing trade, a day trade, which is what I actively do, or an option trade. The thing about gaps that I like, and if you've never heard of a gap, we're going to go over it today. But the thing that I like about gaps is that they move, and they have big moves, okay? You have to get them in the right direction. If you do, you can make really good money, and you can make the money quickly. And even in an overnight, you can make fast money, meaning you don't have to hold something for months. So if you have questions, just write in the room. Here I wrote, hello. There it is. And I will see everyone's questions and go through and answer them as we go through it today, okay? Everybody here has a different level. Some people are new to trading. Some people are new to GAP. Some people are experienced. So don't be afraid to ask me anything. It's always interesting when I talk to people, and I had a, someone do the class um, this past month that never traded before. Actually, I had two people that never traded before do the class in July, and I, I never know what people know. So don't be afraid to ask me something, okay? I took this picture on 42nd Street. That's buildings across the street. I saw that Ferrari. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a Kermit Green. Beautiful car. I, I, uh, they're over a million dollars, which is crazy. Uh, so that's right on my street. The building across the street. Gorgeous. So we're going to talk about making $300,000 a year trading gas. And I use that number because really there's an unlimited amount of money you can make. But I'm using that number because People like to think about trading as a career, and that is what I do it for. But to be honest with you, my goal personally is to get to a point where I'm making a million dollars a year trading. And ever since I've added options to my, to my portfolio to trade, I realize that that is, that is achievable. So it is just a function of how much size you're taking in a trade and, and how much risk. Okay? Is, can everybody hear me? Kathy just said something about the volume. If you would like more information, you can feel free to email me at melissathestockswish.com or email Paul, my assistant. Here's his email, too, or call me, 929-3200-GAP. And I go to YouTube to follow me. That is the best place that I have a lot of videos, okay? So let's get started. We're going to talk about making money. We're going to talk about doing this as a career. We're going to talk about day trading in general here, and we're going to talk specifically about GAP because it's really the only strategy I trade. Now, for those of you that don't know what a gap is, here's what a gap looks like. Stock closed here the night before at 4 o'clock, and in the morning, it opens at a different price. Now, I prefer to short. So this is a gap down. All a gap is is the close is one number, the open is a different one. That's it. Simple. What is not simple <clears throat> is determining of the hundreds of stocks that trade or thousands, if you can include ETF, in the New York and the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, it is challenging to determine or predict the directional bias of a gap before it happens. Because you want to get in the trade before the move occurs. Otherwise, you can't get the money or you can't get the significant amount of profit. If you take a late trade, sometimes you can still make profit, but you don't have the same risk to reward. So my goal is before 9.30 a.m. Eastern time to find a stock like Guild or many other ones, determine the directional bias before the open, watch it on the open, and take a trade between 9.30 and 10. If it does not set up by 10 o'clock, I'm not in it. But before this thing even happens, before the bar forms, I see the gap in the pre-market or post-market, okay? And again, it's just the difference between the close and the open. That's it. So gaps are very special. And the reason they're special is because many, many times the difference between the close and open in gaps that I trade is, is, is significant. Significant enough to mean that, that something's happening. That something happening is what? Significant buying or significant selling. 
or shorting even in certain instances, okay? Now, when I short a stock, I'm shorting selling action, and, and I do, you do have people that are shorting with me in, in the position too that are catching it to the downside, but mostly selling action makes those red bars. Like this kind of thing here is mostly selling action. That's the big bar. So gaps are very special. They are not caused by, by individual traders for the most part. I mean, big traders can create gaps with large size, but it's mostly institutions or hedge funds that are doing it or what I call big money. They have huge massive positions in these stocks and all the stocks I trade have, have volume. Have volume on any given day and volume in the gap before I take the trade and, and otherwise I wouldn't do it, okay? It's a good rule of thumb to not get into a position in a stock if you would be noticed by anyone. In other words, if you are, and this, is, this goes for options trades too, by the way, you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be 10% of the overall volume of the stock. For example, if I, I would never take a position of 5,000 shares in a stock that had like 50,000 in volume in the day, okay? You don't even want to be 5%. You don't even want to be 1%, to be honest with you, okay? So gaps are very special. An event happens that creates the gap. The event could be an earnings report. And many of the stocks that I trade right now in earnings season, it's third quarter earnings season in the stock market, so there's tons of things to trade. You wouldn't think it. If you didn't do gaps, you'd think that this was a boring summer or something, but it's not true. Gaps are volatile, and they have momentum. And in earnings season, you get a lot of them because stocks report, like the guild. Now, you can have gaps for other reasons. News, somebody declares BK, or it's a sector gap, or with the market, but earnings are big ones, meaning you get uh, big moves, typically, because everyone's watching them. They trap people. That's a scary photo. <laughs> Paul, Paul put this in the webinar. This, I, I just noticed that now. That that looks scary. That looks very scary. This is funny. Actually, when I was eating lunch today, I was watching Psycho. You ever, ever seen the movie, Hitchcock movie Psycho? I'm sure some of you have. I love Alfred Hitchcock. And this, I, I ate lunch today, and it was on one of the movie channels, and I watched it. It was middle of the day. Middle of the day, and I was scared watching that. It was a scary movie. Anyways, cups are very special. They trap people, okay? So, for example, if you were long, you had and owned the stock skill, okay? Conceptually, if you were long and you owned it, what would you do? If you owned it the night before, okay, and then the earnings came out, boom, you get up in the morning. Now, this is if you had 2,000 shares, so I don't, I don't know if you would have, but even whatever, the difference is you would have been down. Um, you would have been down 13 grand, $13,000. That's, you know, that's a lot. So many, many people, they can't stomach the loss. For example, in a, in a, in a gap, gap down, and this is what we're talking about here, because like I said, I prefer to short. And so they are forced because of the event to do something. And in this case here, if you were long it, they may be forced to sell it. Okay. Gaps are trapped. Yeah, that's a new saying I should have to come out with, but we're going to, I'm definitely using a different picture. <laughs> that looks like something from Halloween. <laughs> I just noticed that now. <laughs> Anyways, gaps are very special. Sometimes soon, you know, as quickly as possible, people will try to get out. And they will try to get out because they're afraid that if they don't get out right now, they're going to lose more. Now, some people try to hold them, thinking maybe it'll rally back or fill the gap. But that does not always happen. And so then what ends up happening in the ones that I choose, okay, I have a rating system that determines the ones that will follow through in the sell up on the day and the gap down, which we're going to talk about later. They, they go larger, more. So then that same person that might be down 13 grand if the stock was at 84 could be down another $2,000 in five minutes, two minutes, three minutes, 10 minutes, very quickly. So there, the bottom line is that you have to decide if you're in something, if you're in overnight and you're caught in something, the other nice thing about my method is you would know then if it's something that you should hold or sell through the gap. Because you could be in guild and it could be a beautiful, perfect, wonderful long and you could be up in it and then the gap down happens, maybe you don't want to sell it. Maybe it is still okay and you should hold it in the rally back, but how would you know the difference? You wouldn't know unless you knew my system. 
But that's the other benefit of knowing my system. If you're in something that's a long and the stop does not rate as a good gap, something that I wouldn't short, which Guild was, but I'm saying, what if it wasn't? You know then you could hold it and that it would fix itself is what I call it. And it would, it would come back. It would come back to the price that you owned it or give up again. So gaps are very special. The moves happen quickly. I'm in my trades and out usually a minute. I'm not talking about the options. I'm talking about the day trades. Okay, so you, uh, for me, I do the day trades. I'm in and out quickly. If you do a swing trade, you're going to take less buy. We'll talk about a swing trade today. If you do an option, you have a fixed risk, the cost of the option, you have an expiration date, that's it. Okay. So I'm looking for a reaction to the event. The event can be anything. I'm not predicting the gap to happen. I wait for it to happen first. So every day I get up, I play a different symbol. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Today I did FTR. You never know. You never know what you're going to do. I have a rating system. It's a checklist I go through every morning where I rate my gas. Someone said, well, do you do skip it? No, I don't skip it. Eight years of trading, and ever since I created it, I always go through and I rate every gap I trade. I never take a trade in a stock I have not rated. I go through it. Could I eyeball it? Yes. Do I want to have a confirmation? No, in my rating system? Yes. It helps you take the take the risk. It helps you have the conviction. You're putting your own money on the line. You got to learn it. Okay. So this is me sitting here at my desk. I can sit here right now. But uh, you know, I developed this system for myself. That's one of the reasons that it works so well. I think this is one of the reasons why I have a successful business as well. Because I started out just as a trader, wanting to do it, wanting to make money in the market, and all the things that were out there the books that I got, the webinars I went to, and and everything that was out there back gas was incorrect. Every single thing that I was out there back gas was just made no sense to me, and I found not to be true when I was trying to use it in, in the market, and it wasn't working, and not that many people understand gas. But they, you can make so much money in them, and, and, and I've proven that to myself even more so in the last year since I started doing options. And the sky is the limit for the money you can make. I mean, I'm saying $300,000 a year, uh, but, you know, my personal goal is to get to the point to make a million dollars a year trading everything that I know in GAPS, and I very well think it's possible. You have to decide what, what your goals are. It doesn't mean that you will do it right away the first week. Someone asked me today, well, Melissa, if I want to make, you know, $5,000 the first month, what do I have to risk? I said, well, what can you afford, you know? You can only risk what you can afford to lose per trade, but I'm so focused that I only do one trade a day. You could do two, but I, I really think one trade a day is the ticket. It took me three years to figure this out, and, and, and now I'm doing it for a while, and, and, and it works. So I'm going to talk about some of the trades here. You can feel free to ask me any questions, but this was the guild, and actually this was Paul's trade. So this broke just out of the sky, out of no man's land. Again, it was an earnings. I think this was at night. I have to go back and check. <clears throat> anyway, this was last week. Huge, massive move. Boom. Stock closed here, gap down, dropped. This is a daily chart. So my rating system is based off the daily chart, but I don't take the trade on the daily. I take the trade on the one minute. So Paul actually shorted this here. Boom. Right away. 930, 931, 932, in. Dropped. And then he took half out, rallied back, he lowered the stop, dropped again, out of the rest. But it kept going. I mean, it really kept going. This is a big one. So, you know, the price of the stocks that I trade, like today was a snaily one. It was like $4 something. But I'd say the price of stocks that I trade can range from like three, four dollars all the way up to hundreds and bucks for the day trades. And and someone was asking me about account size and balance. And we were talking about this as far as profitability and based on percentages. Day trading is not I don't look at it like percentages. If you did, it would be a ridiculous percentage of the risk to reward that you make in some of these trades. So I don't talk like that because I'm not an investor, I'm a trader. Um, but, you know, it's about the dollar you risk times how many dollars you can make. And if you look at day trading, like investment percentages, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous percentage because you could double your money every day. 
But to me, that wouldn't be a fabulous trade. A fabulous trade to me is making three or 400% of my money in one day, okay? So to understand trading, it's a different conceptually than investing, but you're still looking to be profitable in every trade you take. And not every trade goes to the target. You would have had every, every right to take this trade here and get out of the entire thing in here. It would have been the safe bet. If you think something's going to drop further, you can hold it, but not everything goes to the target or the dream target. But the idea is getting to pick. The idea is getting the direction right, which is short, because okay, if you went long, you'll be long. You can see some people did go long here. <clears throat> you can see that some people did go long here. In fact, let's go back and look and see. People probably tried to go long right here in support, because <clears throat> I can tell because that rally was really big. Let me just see that, 8250. Yes, look at that. Do you see this? So some traders went long here into the prior support. That's why this was, a, you know, very aggressive. And then they got stopped out under the low of the day. And here's where you have the break. And if you're in it short, you're getting paid into this. And that's what made it kept going. That's one of the reasons this went to a bigger number. Day traders bought this dip in here into the first five minutes, into the prior support. That's why the rally was big back. If you took it up here, you're still up, even if you were in it short. They got stopped out on the low of the day, kept breaking, 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 breaking. And that's what happened. But see, this is, again, what I'm talking about, why you have to know what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing, and it is so important. But it's the rating system that tells me that. But if you had 100% conviction in it, you did what Paul did. You held through half the trade to get it down to a bigger number, but lowered the stop. Or you could have put it at break even. I don't tend to do that, but you could have. And here was the entry. 83.69 short. Stop. 84.51. And again, this is an advanced risk. I usually risk $1,000 per trade. I risk more in options, but for the day trade. Sometimes I risk $1,500, but $984 in this one, 1,200 shares. If you were half these out of it, you would have made two grand. So do you see, this is 200% on your money. So, you know, for those of you that are investors, that's what it is, but this isn't really how I look at what I do. But so you better understand it. And I use leverage to day trade. This is an expensive stock. So you can trade at a place with four to one leverage or 10 to one leverage or more if you're at a prop place. Any questions about Gill? <clears throat> Any questions, ask me. So this is a short. Short it, boom. And when you short, you're betting the price is going down. This is the kind of big move you get in gas. Okay, so conceptually, Again, it's the panic and the sell-off. And as I was saying, I much prefer to short. And this is one of the reasons I actually prefer to short because you get moves like this quickly in short. So does anyone have questions? We have time here, let me know. Anyways, Gil was an example of a day trade. Either way, whatever you do, it's in and out quickly when you're day trading. So I'm an active day trader. Mondays is the slowest day of the week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are the busy days of the week. And earning season are the busiest times to do gas because you'll get 20, 30 things that you could look at in the morning or rate. I only do one. And every trade I'm looking to take is between 9.30 and 10. The nice thing about doing this, if you want to do it for career, is that you can do it from anywhere in the world. Okay, you can work from home. The only boss is myself. And the only expenses you have are you have to pay a platform fee to the broker. You pay your commissions to the broker to get in and out of the trades, any ECN fees. And the only, the only limitation, really, that you have to your trading potential to make money is you, which has to do with the amount of money that you risk. And that is relative to what you can afford. And if you want advice on that, you can ask me, and I'll give you a gauge or a guide. All right? So, you know, it's just a, it's a nice lifestyle. I think it, it's, it's ironic or destiny or fate or whatever you want to call it. That My prior job, I made really good money doing mortgages, but I absolutely had no life. I had, I worked seven days a week. I had clients calling me at Christmas. You know, when you're in real estate, people are buying homes on the weekends and at night, they're out with the realtors and the realtors were relentless calling me. Relentless calling me and bugging me about loans. The banks closed at five o'clock, but it didn't matter. I had clients from real estate agents calling me all the time and I had no life. This job is done for me in the morning. When I shut down the room, I'm done. I'm doing a webinar here, and I sent some emails this afternoon, but I don't have to do anything the rest of the day after I'm done trading. 
Tom is saying, are you basing your option call to your Golden Gap play? I'm not sure what you mean by that. The rating system is how I'm determining the options calls. As far as the plays, I'm not necessarily doing a day trade and an option trade in the same stock. I don't know if that's what you're asking me about the plays, but the trades I'm taking that are options, I'm basing off the Golden Gap rating system to determine the pick and the directional bias. But as far as I'm not, doesn't mean I'm day trading as well. If I'm doing an option in it, chances are I'm just doing the option. And there's a price to the option, which I'm choosing, that is a good price to pay for the option, that I see where the move's going to go in the chart with the target based on the Golden Gap rating system, that it will be more profitable. Does that make sense? I hope that answers your question. How do I find the gap? Just with a... Uh, just with my platform charting package scanner, any any platform in the world has the top 20 downs and ups of the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange or should as a free scanner thing. It's the top 20 list. If you don't know how to find it, call your place. Call your charting package place and they'll point you. It's free. Or you can go into here and just go into Yahoo and just look this up, print out the earnings calendar for the rest of the year or here. But I, I, I find there's an overlap. I mean, the big names are usually on, on my top 20. So that's 40 stocks right there I can find and pick. Yes, my, my options calls are based on the Golden Gap rating system. Everything I do is, everything I do is. Today we're talking about gas. Everything that's in this webinar is about gas. I live and breathe gas. If you want me to be honest with you and I'll get in the microphone and stand on top of the Empire State Building, I'll speak to the world and I'll get on television and say it too. I don't think there's any other way that you consistently make money unless you trade gaps in the market. There, I said it. I don't, I don't think you will. Unless you want to call yourself a hedge fund or something else, and they make decisions based on other things. If you don't have unlimited income or a boatload of money, if you're a regular person, I don't think you can make it unless you trade gaps. And there, not every level. So it's great to say, well, I'm going to go long in the support. Uh, there's about 1 million support in every chart. And the same thing with resistance. I called the market to make a brand new all-time high this entire year. No one believed me. No one listened to me. People lambasted me all over the internet about it. I was right. How on earth did I make that call? <clears throat> because of the gaps. Because of the gaps in the chart. That's how I did it. It was an impossible call, just like so many other impossible things that I see and call. I'm telling you that I don't think you can make money as a day trader any other way unless you trade gaps consistently. That doesn't mean that you can't do other things and sometimes make money some weeks and sometimes make money some months and sometimes have a good year and sometimes have a bad year. Why? Because sometimes you got the market with you or sometimes you have the market up or sometimes you have the market down or sometimes you have a strategy that's working and then it stops working and you don't understand why and no one knows why because it doesn't consistently work. It worked for a short period of time and then it stopped working. I've been doing this for eight years. I've had a business for four. I was people making money with me all that time, and they're still in the room with me. That's not a fluke. That's not a stroke of luck. Okay? I have a full-on full on clientele and business. Then people would not be paying me every single month to be in the room after they paid for the class and left this work to get my calls. I don't think you can make money as a day trader unless you trade gaps. I don't think there's any other strategy that actually out there is anything that I would consider a strategy. There are entries. There are trades. There are plays. You could buy something into support, and you could say that's a, that's a trade. That's a play to me. The play is you take it into support and put the stop X, Y, Z, and you take it up into a rally or like a short. That's a play. Entry. It's an entry. That's not the strategy. A strategy is something, why am I taking this trade? I am taking this train because, um, let me find the next chart, hold on. You can do this, but let me just find a ch uh, chart here. Shoot, let me go back and find a chart. Just went off on a tangent here, but, um, okay. So the plan I was trying to say is, why, what's, what, why are you doing this, okay? What is the reason? If a strategy to me is there's a reason, I am going to short guild today or FTR today, like I did, because I have 100% conviction it's going to sell off today. Why? 
because on the daily chart, the stock raised 22 points or whatever it raised. It's got to be 20 points or more per my 26-point rating system to do in the direction of the gap. But based on that point method, I have a high level of conviction that the stock will continue into the gap, into the live day. It's got to continue. The gap's already there. I see it. But it's got to keep going. It's got to keep going in the direction of the gap. Okay? And this goes for longs, too. But anyways, the point is that the, the reason I'm doing it is the event, and then I rate it, and, it, and there's, a, there's a common sense method to it, which, by the way, I just explained to you. I mean, this is exactly what I'm talking about here. This one back here, this slide back here, which Paul put in. There, that's the common sense. Common sense says if you own 2,000 shares and you were allowed to bed in the morning, you get up and you're down 13 grand, common sense says, what are you going to do? Well, if I was down $13,000, I would sell out of it. I would bite the bullet. It would suck. But what are you going to do? And by the way, if you if you didn't, you you lost more. Okay, I didn't look at that chart today, but no, I did look at that chart today. I did look at that chart today. It broke and went under the level below the, the day of the gap that happened last week. Since then, I, I don't know where it closed. So, anyways, you can do this. The point is that you can do this. You just have to learn how to do it, and normal, regular people can do it. It's not beyond the realm of comprehension. Many, many people have such a negative attitude about trading. Why? Because they've lost money in the market. And many people lose money because they believe that X, Y, Z thing is going to work. And then when they do it and it doesn't work, then they, they lose conviction. They lose conviction. They have a negative attitude and they start being angry and mean and negative. And that's not going to help you become successful. So if you don't think this is going to work, then don't do it. Stop going to webinars. Close down your account. Find something else. There's lots of other careers. You don't have to do this. Stop and don't even invest one dime because if you don't think it's possible, then you'll never make money. So I'm not saying if you have a positive attitude, you're going to make it. But I'm saying if you have a positive attitude, you have a chance, you have a shot. And then you've got to find a strategy that works as well. But there's a lot of people out there that are trading that have ne terrible negative attitudes about the market and, and no wonder they lose. It's not even, it's, again, that's common sense. If you are not doing well, stop and take a break for a week, a month, a year, and ask yourself if you've lost conviction in the market or you just don't have a strategy. I can teach you a strategy that works, and I can help you with your mindset and motivating you, but ultimately, at the end of the day, that's up to you, okay? I can teach you the skill. You come and take my class, you're paying me for the information and the skill. And yes, I do motivate people, but I can't force you to be positive or to take the trade either. That is really up to you. You have to decide. Do you want to do this for a career? Do you want to do it for extra money? Do you want to do it for retirement? You know, or were you sick of your, you know, job hours like I was? I was tired of the hours I was working at my mortgage job. And on top of that, the industry was changing. And I just wanted to continue to make good money. And then I saw the market as something that had unlimited potential for money. And that was something that was very exciting. And when I first started out doing mortgages, it really had unlimited potential. But the banking industry changed. The banking industry changed, and when that changed, then banks just didn't want to loan money anymore. I don't know if they still even want to loan money today. It's, you know, it, I don't think it'll ever go back to the same way that it was. Money was just, it was free money, free money, free money. No income asset loans and, you know, 125% LTVs. And, I mean, it was just all kinds of crazy lending things the banks were doing. You know, now everything has to be on paper and you have to look like gold. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying, as a person that was trying to do loans, not everybody looks like that. You know, normal people, it's hard for them to pull the down payment together for a house. they got a savings for and you know, for a long, long time. And, and so if the bank doesn't want to do the loan, I, you know, you can't make money as a mortgage person or a real estate person unless the bank approves the loan. So I saw the writing on the wall in 2007, 2008, and I just wanted a different career. But the nice thing is that it has to do with the amount of risk. All right, let me answer some questions here. Do I trade gaps on the SPY? I did uh, two options trades on the SPY, but as far as day trading, every once in a blue moon, I can't tell you the last time I actually day traded the SPY. I probably have this year, but I can't tell you when or the day. Typically, I don't do ETFs unless there's no other stocks. I prefer companies. There's more um, emotion behind a company like Apple or something like that than in the overall market sector. I don't know if you're asking me that today because the market fell today. Did I short it? No. 
but I'm, I will say it's very challenging to read market direction. One of the reasons I've done it well is because I read the gaps in the market, but I don't even get the market read right every day. It's challenging to read the market ETFs and the QQQs and the SPY daily in the Dow, the DM. But, you know, people people can read gaps in those and do it. If you could use futures trading, that would help you futures trading to read the gaps in the market. But I like the emotions associated with companies. Picture is not updating. Um, is the picture not updating? Somebody let me know. Betty's having problem, uh, trouble. Uh, one method for all trades, yes. That's all you have to do is rate the gap. And then you determine your risk and you determine your exit. So obviously, if you're in an options trade, your target is different than if you're in a day trade. Because a day trade, you got to get out and you got to be flat by 4 o'clock. If you're in an options trade or swing trade, you can take it out longer. you got more time. you got a couple of days or weeks. So your target's different. Uh, David K is saying, if you're using options, what delta do you use? I'm just, I'm not doing any fancy. I, I told you, this is, this is so me though, people. No one trained me in doing options at all. No one. I'm not doing any fancy dancy thing. Nothing. I'm reading the gap. I'm writing the gap based on my method. Then I'm looking at the chart. <laughs> I'm looking for the target. Then I look at the price of it and see if I think it's worth it and where it could go and based on the options chain. And then I'm seeing it's going to go higher or lower. And based on that, I do a call and a put. That's it. It is the simplest option strategy out there, what I'm doing. It, and, and, I, and I really just taught myself. I just taught myself how to do it. I'm not doing fancy covered calls and all this other things. I'm not doing that. I'm doing something that's so easy if you know how to look at gas that you just, you know, it's, it's not overly complicated. If you're taking it in the right direction, the option should work. The only thing that you got going against you in an option is time. So you be conservative with your target and you take some profit off if you're up. Okay. We'll talk about some of those at the end here. Is it it's okay? Picture's fine. All right. So again, as I was saying, regular people can do it, but you got to have the focus on one strategy. The uh, only one I do is the golden gap and it's really the 26 point rating system. I only take the trade when it sets up, so I'm not in stuff pre and post market. Because what if it doesn't set up? Okay. A couple of the gaps today that I rated that I didn't do on the live day today that I didn't trade never set up right. In fact, one open and reverse swoosh. And then people kept saying, da, 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 da. I said, no, we're not doing it. You have to wait for the setup. You pick a time to take the trade and a time to get out. You make your money and you're done. And that's it. So here was WDC. This was last, was it Thursday or Friday? No, this was Thursday. No, it's Friday. This was a good one. This actually opened and swooshed, went to the dream target, beautiful, beautiful gap, okay? Stop close to the night before, gap down. Boom. You rate the gap in the morning. It was good. And there was a lot of stuff to look at last week. It opened and swooshed right into the open, okay? Then it's set up here. Then it's set up again here. You had 100 different places to take this, and it fell like a brick. See this? So I got out of this early. I should have held it, but short was 49.75. Stop was 50.50. Share size was 1,500 shares. Risk was 1,125 bucks. Drop into the first target hole number, I was out. But it kept going, actually. It kept going to a bigger number. And it actually went to the target. But this set up late for me. The drop was late. And I was not sure what the market was going to do Friday. I've been expecting the market to have a bigger move higher. And I didn't know when it would be. It didn't happen today. And it didn't happen Friday. But I got out of this at the first target. It did go, though, to the dream target, okay, which ended up being 47 bucks. So... I got out of this at 49 something. If you held this all the way down, it was 47. Let me go back to the daily chart. You can see it on here. If you held this all the way down to the dream target, which I didn't do on the trade, you would have made four grand. One trade. So you see, I mean, the idea of making $300,000 a year is not crazy. It's just, it's just not. Some trains set up lame and you get out early. The first number, some you have more conviction in, you hold down. 
There were some people in the room that held this all the way down. You had to hold it into the late morning, early afternoon, though, to get it down. But it was a good gap. Okay. So you could have done a swing trade on this. The swing trade on this, if you took a small size, small size is 375 bucks. Because remember, you're in an overnight. It's different. Something could gap against you. So 500 shares, if you did a swing trade, it was 375 approximately. Again, your stop would be over the high of the day of the gap. Exit of 45, it's already broke 45 and gone to 44 something. You could have made $2,300. So in this one stock alone, in this one single stock symbol, you could have day traded it and done a swing trade and done an option. I didn't put the option in here, but it would have been a put. Um, let me just make some questions here. All you need is chart reading skills like you have. Yeah, that's what you need. I often say if I could, you know, make a liquid pill, you know, and sell it, you know, just drink it, you could see exactly things like me. But that's why taking the class, you learn to train your eye like me and being in the room with me then after the class. But not everybody is. Some people just sign up for the class, take the class, and then they trade on their own. But the class is you're learning to read things like me. You can line a thousand people up that would look at this as a long that would have went long. It was right here on the support of the 200 period moving average in the gap. It was wiggling and jiggling all morning around this area. Oh gosh, that just scared me. <laughs> Paul, you just texted me. I just jumped out of my seat. <laughs> I just. Jumped out of my seat there. That was like that. That was like the psycho movie there for a second. It was like that picture you put in. Um, <laughs> anyways, getting back to this. This was wiggling and jiggling all morning. We can pull it up later if we have time. But the point is, a lot, I think a lot of people thought this might have been long. You know, this gap down here right on the support. And if you don't know what to do with this, you're not you're not certain. Okay, you're just not certain. So. It's, it's, it's about learning what I'm seeing to read the chart the way that I'm seeing it because I make the prediction before the move happens. Everyone in the world can see that this happened after the fact. And after the live day, actually, right into the open, you can see this broke here. So, you know, you know, I mean, after the fact, it's always, you know, you can say, well, shoulda, woulda, coulda. The, the genius of my system is that you can predict what it's going to do prior to the open. You still can't take the train until the open but you can predict it with a very, very high level of probability. And that's the genius in it. After the fact, it comes up on everyone's scanner. We know this is down, okay? Uh, any questions? Now that I just jumped out of my seat, <laughs> it's a psycho movie after Paul Dexter. <laughs> um, let me just see if I'm updated here. Uh, the other thing, somebody wrote something about staying focused, Tom, was saying, I, you know, that's why I only usually do one trade a day. And actually, I'm so focused that I, with the options, I'm only doing one option at a time. I might call more than one option at the same time if I see something, but I might not do the call or put if I'm already in another one. So it's, it's, it's I just have a one-track mind. And, and, and I also have a one-track mind if I want to be in one direction. So I won't go, I won't short and go long the same stock on the same day. And I really won't go long and short on the same day. And that's the other reason I, and I only also do one trade. So I, like my brain is, my brain is thinking short, 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 or long, 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 long. And that's how I see it. And then I'm not deviating. So I'm only seeing it in one way. And it either works or doesn't. In the direction I'm seeing it. And it just either works or doesn't. So I'm, I'm so focused on the, doing one strategy. I'm focused in one direction, whatever day I'm playing it, and I'm also focused on uh, just one trade, okay? So all of that, it also alleviates the stress. If you got five trades on, <laughs> that's stressful. If you got all, what if they all fail at the same time? You're not gonna feel good about that. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I think also the consistency with where I've gotten with my trading is, is the level of focus with just one direction, one thing at any one given time. So how do you make the money? You chunk it out, you chunk it out. And again, it averages out if you wanna make 300 grand or six grand a week, but it's not like you make, you know, 
$2,000 every day or $1,000 every day. There are seven days that you have to take a loss. I'd say two to three days out of the month, you'll take a loss. Some days you may not train. Other days you may make four grand in one train. Some days you make a thousand. You know, this is not a normal job like you go to McDonald's and you get a paycheck for working out hours a day. You don't do that. It's you have your rules. You take the trade. You're looking for a different thing every day. You follow it down. Some days you get huge, big moves right away out of the sky. And some things, you kind of scalp it. Your goal is only one objective, though, is to be profitable. Okay. So if you want to think about it, with many of the stocks that I'm trading, like I said, they have a lot of momentum and volatility. I'm trading stocks that are, and, you know, I don't know if we're going to call them high flyers, but they, they move. Okay. So the idea of getting 60 cents in something is not unrealistic. And that would mean only a position of like 2,000 shares, which many people that day trade should be able to afford. I mean, you know, again, I don't know your count size, but that would be $1,200 a day. 3,000 shares of 40 cents, same number, 4,000 shares of 30 cents, and 6,000 and 20 cents. And, this, you know, this is like a scalp. But you'll have a baby one like today where it may only go 10 cents, 20 cents. Okay. So I did a I did I did a trade last week. I made twelve thousand dollars in one trade. I did risk three grand to get this profit, but it was a four hundred percent return on investment, if you want to look at it like that. So what does it mean? It means what if I had risked 10 grand? The profit would have been, you know, forty thousand dollars in one trade. I would have had to put up 10 grand and I would have had to be willing to accept the loss if it didn't work. And I'm sure that day is coming soon. But this is above and beyond my day trading. So if your goal is to make 20, 25, 30 grand a month, and you can make half of that goal in one trade, what do you what do you think you can possibly make on any given month? A lot of money. Okay, a lot of money. So I was thinking this back myself after I took the position. I don't know who I was talking to. I, I was a friend or somebody I was talking to about it. Like there was not, at not one moment was I, did I think that this trade wouldn't work? I think when you, when you, when you get to a point where you so believe in what you do, which I do in my rating system, which is one of the reasons why I'm a, just a great teacher. I'm just a great teacher at my system because I believe it works because I know it works because I see the money. But I'm saying, like, you know, it helps you plop it on. It helps you take the risk. If not one ounce of you believes this won't work, you'll you'll do it. And and if you think that it won't, then why are you in the trade? Now you still have to be willing to consider the risk, okay? Because let's just say you have three thousand dollars in your account. You can't risk three thousand dollars in one trade. You have no money left in the account. You have to be okay with the risk so that you can sleep at night and relax. But anytime you take a trade, there's always a possibility of fail. But the reality is I'm trading my method for so long and I have such a high level of confidence and conviction that when I did this trade, there was not one ounce of me that thought that it wouldn't work. Every day I was considering though whether or not I needed to get out because I was that money back and forth. It swung around since the time I took the trade, it swung and swung and swung and swung. But I was positive except the first day, I think, first day or two I was down and then it started to move, but it swung around. It swung like a beast. And that's where I was back and forth about where to get out. I literally got out almost at the high. This is going to be an extra $600. This is one of the best trades I've ever done in my life. I couldn't have gotten a better price in it. I couldn't have better gotten a better exit out of it. And there's not, that doesn't happen in Harley that often. And I made a really lot of money. But I will tell you that as the years go on and the more that I trade, this is exactly what's happening. My trade is improving and the same thing can happen to you. The same thing can happen to you. The same thing can happen to you. And one of my students is Gallagher. He's sitting right now. He made eleven thousand dollars in the same trade. He had the same position as me. He got out not quite as good as me of the exit, but he made only a thousand dollars shy of what I did because he got out. He got out under three something. So you don't have to actively day trade my method. If you can't be at your desk every day between nine thirty and ten, you can use it for options. If you can, you can do both. You can make more money. But the concept of your idea, making 300 grand a year, 200 grand a year, or half a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year at some point is not out of the woods. People are doing it. Are a lot of people doing it? No. No, they're not. Because they are in fear. They don't have confidence. They don't have a good strategy. And they don't believe in the market. And they want to be negative. And it's so much easier for people to be negative in general. I'm generalizing here than it is for people to be positive. 
Because many people go through their hard lickings and their hard knocks. And I was there, okay? I was there. So the fact is that you got to be willing to persevere when the hard times come, and, they're gonna, and they come for everyone. If you can't make it through those hard times, then you're never going to make it to the level of success. But if you're willing to go through it, you'll make it to the level of becoming successful, and you'll stand above the crowd. And when, when you just have to decide, are you willing to do it or not? Everybody wants something for nothing. You're, you're not going to get that in life, and you're not going to get it in the market. And the market doesn't give money to people unless they go through their lickings. You go through the rigmarole, and you go through the process, and you take your beatings, and you, and you find your way. And, and you can do it if you're willing to do it. Um, yeah, I don't think I have Google in here. I don't know if Tom put it in here or not. He might have. Here, let's talk about FTR, and then I'll, then I'll bring up the Google at the end. I'm not sure if you put it in here. This was today's. This, was, this is ridiculous, actually. <laughs> I didn't hold this anywhere near down where it went. This was crazy. I got annoyed with this because it took so long. But but the normal trade here, I'm going to go over and show you the morning move. But this was this was ridiculous. Look how it went. So in Amy Snail, and I got was just totally had no patience with this. But it actually went to the dream no number. Look at that. The market did fall today, so that helped this. But this was a good short. It was a good short, and it worked. So here's what it did. This is a one-minute chart on FDR. Open, drop, broke, shorted. So drop, rallied back. Here was the stop initially, then I moved the stop down here, boom, boom, boom. And again, I didn't hold it all the way down here, but this was crazy. Look where it went. Actually, this is uh, pretty early in the morning. So share size, if you just did it for quick scalp move, 486 was the entry. Stop initially was 502. I lowered it then to like 497 into the move. Share size, 6,000 shares is about a $1,000 risk, 960. If you got a scalp in it through the break of the low of the day, you could have made 10 cents. But if you held it all the way down, you could have made another 10 cents. A rinker dinker, but it was money, and you take what you can get. And I got out early, so this just this is actually kept going, going, going. I think everybody got out of this different. <laughs> but it actually never did anything wrong. Looking at this here. It just took forever. So that was a nice sell-off, just a cheap stop. So it took a while to break. But actually was a really big move for the price point. I mean, that was a big move for that stock. Oh, this was Paul's trade last week at Amazon. Let me quickly go through this and then I'll then I'll bring up the Google. Paul had a nice call on Amazon as a day trade. I, I didn't do this one. This this actually had a good move. He did it here. This is a five-minute chart, took half out here, pulled back, rallied up. And this is a long trade. I don't like to do trades in the afternoon, but Paul will do late trades, and he makes good later calls, and ran up here into the close. This had a nice gap. So you could have made a huge amount of money on this. Again, Paul did this one. But, you know, this is just based on the gap. It's just based on the gap. And, again, you can go long. Oh, this is a long. The other ones I was showing you were shorts. Okay. So really quickly through, I'm going to go through this here. The bottom line is you've got to get the directional bias right. And this that's common sense. Many people want to do fancy things or think they get an edge by going against the grain. You can't do that. You, you lost money if you've been short this market when it flipped up over the high. And the market never pulled back. Today is the biggest sell-off day we've had since we hit up over the high. And you can count today as a pullback. In fact, I wouldn't even... I'm not, I'm not predicting this because I don't know how we close, and I can't see the gap in the morning because it's not tomorrow morning yet, but I would be surprised. I wouldn't even be surprised at all, not a whit, if we, that's it for the pullback, today's sell-off. I have to see how we close, but I wouldn't be surprised. The market didn't pull back at all, kept going, 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 and I called it, it wouldn't pull back. So common sense says you can't make money unless you're in the right direction. It has to do with the big money. It has to do with the institutions. It has to do with the banks. It's all based on one strategy. It's a 26-point rating system that I teach. You can make $300,000 a year. You can make $12,000 a trade. You can do options, swing trades, day trades. Maybe you don't even need to make any of this. Maybe you'll be happy if you make 50 grand a year or 100 grand a year to supplement your income with another job that you have. Maybe you like the job that you're doing right now. Personally, I had to find a new career, and I didn't like it anymore, and the hours were too long, but that's the reason that I decided I wanted to day trade. But I think that many people can uh, co-mingle their current job with this because the strategy is set up in the morning or done so quickly. Half an hour a day is all you need to be in the room trading, and you should sign in the room by 9 o'clock a.m. 
to be in there to get my calls and the, and the analysis before the open and then stay there and get the trades. But you don't have to devote, devote a lot of time to doing this. This is just the, that's the Google chart, but I want to show you, I want to show you in a bigger picture. This was the other call I made. This is Apple. This ran up over $2 literally right after I called it. There it is. I don't, you know, I don't remember what day I call this here, here. And then it went, Poop. and it went two and a half bucks. And it, it literally took it and you were right up. And then, you, and then you get out. And this actually is a, through August 12th. Uh, this is a nowhere near expiring. Today's the second. But that was another option to call me. Uh, so anyways, here. Here's the rally that took us over the high. Paul's showing that in the chart. So I teach a class on my method. It's a 26-point rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning so that you can be successful as a day trader. It teaches you directional bias. Find the stock that is a big move of the day. We've got to take the trade before 10 or I don't do it. And also has good risk to reward. That's about the percentage of return on investment we were talking about earlier. That's how you look at it if you have an investment type of mentality. But you you don't have to do more than one thing. It just doesn't matter how you play it. What matters is that you rate the gap. It's the 20-point rating system. That's what is important. And it is really about looking at the charts the way that I do. The, the Just getting a window into my brain, into my mind, to be able to see it in the same way that I do. So, you know, you look at lineup, like I said, a thousand people on the street and they look at a chart the same way. No, they wouldn't. Everyone would predict something different. Who would be the person that ends up making money? The person that makes the correct prediction more often than other people. A lot of the times someone will take a trade, they'll go short, they'll say it, they'll get scared, then they'll think this isn't working, they'll quit the long and then they'll short it again. They might do the trade three or four times before they get the direction right and have three stop outs before the trade goes. And then even if the last one works, they're down in the day or only up a little or break even. You, you want to just do something once Full on and take it and believe in it. So my next class is August. The class for August is August 13th and 14th. It's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. It's held online. Class is $49.99. You retake the free. You can redo the class as many times as you want to and be anywhere in the world because it's online. If you want to sign up, you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. And if you sign up for the early bird, which is by Friday, you're going to get Paul's class for free which is something very nice. Paul started uh, off with me in April, and he has a very specific class on advanced entries, exits, and management. It's this Saturday. So if you sign up for the GAT class in August by Friday, you get his class free on Saturday. It's Saturday, August 6th. Okay? And if you want to try out for the room for the rest of the week, I have no idea what we get. I know Tesla's out Wednesday night. I didn't look and see what's out tonight, but there's a lot of stuff reporting this week. So if you want to try out of the room, you can email me at info at and I'll click pull up Google if anybody has any questions here. I'm going to just take this slide off just right in the room. Uh, what did you want me to look at with Google? Just the option or? I think Tom asked that question. And anybody else has any other questions? Galahad, are there any? Oh, we had a nice rally here into the close. Are there any big names out tonight here I can quick look at? Great rally. This is good. Hey, listen, we opened today at 216.65. High today was 216.83. Low was 214.57. Closed at 215.63. I don't even need to get my calculator and look at that. We did 50% retracement rally into the close. And we had a big thing here. What is this? 216.90. Yeah, that was real. I think this is real. After hours. Anyways, this, this had a big, big rally into the close. So we retraced 50% of the sell-off into the close. That's a good sign. All right, what's your question on Google? Time and a question, anybody else? 
I don't remember the exact day I took it in here. I was down when I first took it. So I must have gotten in it. It was, it was this day or this day. One of the red days I was in it because I, I was down in it the first day that I took it. So one of these days here I got in it. But I saw the gap prior to getting in it. I had been watching it. And really, I knew the earnings were out. So I knew the earnings were out this because um, you get the volatility into the earnings, whether it's, a, it's something that is you're going long or something that is falling, you typically have vol a volatility in a stock into the earnings. And I knew the earnings were this night. There were the night of the 28th and Amazon was out the same night. I didn't hold any of the position into the earnings. Although there was times when I previously done that, I was up too much money, I didn't do it. I had a great exit, I'm glad that I got out and I made the right decision and I didn't even hold any of it. Sometimes you can hold you know, a little bit if you want just to see what happens. This could have this could have very easily flew over the high into the earnings. The problem was on this day, the market didn't look that great. This was the Thursday or the Friday, Friday day. This is Thursday night, Friday day. So the market didn't look that great. So it was, I made a good decision going out of the whole thing here on the, this day. And I got out in the morning, which was a good decision too. Anyways, I was reading it here. Every one in here you could have rated. This is a gap up. This is a gap up. This is a gap up. Every one in here you could have rated it. So I I actually could have got in this before I even got in it. I just don't like to be in and stuff for too long to have it on. But I felt very comfortable then getting in in here. And like I said, it was down when I got in it. But there were three gaps here prior to this one. That you could have you could have rated, and actually this is a gap up too. The day I got in it was a gap up. The stock closed here at 720.64. It opened at 720.62. High was 7.24. It actually gapped up four days in a row. One, two, three, four. And there you have it. So every time something gaps. When you learn my 26-point method, you can rate it. And any time it rates 20 points or more, you can do it in the direction of the gap. You could trade the same stock every day if it gaps every day if you want. Some of these high flyers do. The market gaps every day. But I like to do a different thing every day. But, you know, same principle with options where you still have to rate the gap. I just showed you. I just showed you four. Cray? Uh, Cray is gapping up or gapping down? Hold on. Right. Mm. This is very thin. Well, I don't know. We'll have to see what the volume is in the morning here. It's this is rateable. Some of these days are thin. This is I'll rate this in the morning. Yeah, I'll rate it. I'll rate it. Some of the days are thin. You can, you can, I'm always looking to do in the direction of the gap, but I prefer shorts. I just prefer shorts, Tom. But yes, I rated, I rated Google as a bullish gap. I rated this as a bullish gap. Ruby, I'm just looking at some things that are happening tonight. Gala has plenty in the room. Uh, this one is a good one. <gasps> Here, let's check the volume on this. No, nope, this will be fine. Love it. Now, I didn't rate this, and I'm not rating it right now, and I'm way too tired. But this, I like just immediately. I like it. All right, what was the other one? I'm probably doing that. I'll have a good one tomorrow. So email me if you want a trial. Email me if you're interested in the class. I like this, too. Oh, this is a good one, too. Oh, we have a tie. Well, I'll have to rate it. Two good ones, CYH and Ruby. Let me just write that down. Well, that's nice to know. So you can rate the gaps at night if you want, but I usually wait to the morning, but sometimes I'll look like I just did right now. Very good. Listen, keep the faith, people. I know some of you have been following me for a while and you're back and forth about the class. You gotta decide if you wanna learn how to do this. Some of you have been following me for so long. God love you. You know, I, I don't know. You you know, you just got to decide if you want to learn this or not. You're never going to learn what I know if you don't do the class. And and you just have to decide if you want to jump in and start making money or not. It's, 
it, it really does take the confidence and the conviction to do it. I, I, I know that you need that, but you can email me any questions you have, okay? All right, have a good night, everyone. Have a gorgeous evening. See you later.